Since its first event in 2009, Bellator has been privy to some of MMA's biggest stars, either as a stepping stone for future success or a final swan song before retirement. Today, we look at some of the fighters whose tenures in the B-League is overlooked, from future UFC champions to one of the sport's all-time greats. Welcome to the INC, and these are five MMA fighters you never knew fought in Bellator. Before his rechristening as Street Jesus, Jorge Masvidal was one of the sport's most well-traveled fighters. A street fighting vagabond amassing a 16-3 record competing in Bodog, Strikeforce, and Sengoku where he earned a reputation as an exciting but overly boxing heavy fighter. In 2009, Masvidal served as the main event of Bellator's first ever card, a show that also featured Eddie Alvarez and future bantamweight champion Joe Soto. Masvidal's opponent would be UFC veteran Nick Aguilar, the fight serving as part of an eight-man tournament to crown the company's lightweight champion. Masvidal wasted little time staking his claim as one of the favorites, catching a pre-puberty John Anik by surprise. That it's will do over. It. No time to waste. 19 sec one minute, 19 seconds into the opening round. Jorge Masvidal disposes of Nick Aguilar. Game Bread's run would end in dramatic fashion at Bellator 5 where Street Jesus was crucified by Toby Amata thanks to one of the greatest submissions in MMA history. Masvidal would fight once more for the promotion, claiming a rare submission over Eric Reynolds before signing a full-time contract with Strikeforce. Gamebred would struggle with inconsistent performances over the next eight years and develop a journeyman reputation, before one of the best calendar years in MMA history made him an instant favorite and super necessary megastar. Bellator gave Carla Esparza the resolve to become a two-time UFC champion. A two-time wrestling All-American, Esparza made her MMA debut in 2010, winning three fights in her first six months competing for regional shows in California and Colorado. On just three days notice, Esparza replaced an injured Angela Magana in the Bellator Strawweight Tournament, where she'd take on Japanese phenom and women's MMA legend Megumi Fuji. Fuji was regarded as one of the pound-for-pound top-ranked fighters in the world, having won 20 fights in a row, and most of those coming via first-round submission. But Esparza made sure she wasn't overwhelmed by her fabled opponent. Do I respect her skills and her record? Yes. Am I intimidated? No. Can I beat Megumi? Definitely. With both ladies fearful of each other's grappling, the fight played out primarily on the feet, with Esparza more than holding her own during the striking exchanges. Fuji, however, knew her jiu-jitsu game was an X-factor, and just under a minute into the second round, fans were treated to a familiar outcome. Tap, 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 tap. There's the tap! I believe you call that a belly down Juji Gatami in Japan, Jimmy. Esparza would fight just once more in the promotion, losing a split decision to Jessica Aguilar at Bellator 46. For the next four years, those fights would be the only blemishes of Esparza's career as the Cookie Monster rallied with a four-fight winning streak that saw her claim the Invicta Strawweight title, before upgrading her belt to UFC gold when she won the 20th season of The Ultimate Fighter. Forgotten Bellator runs aren't reserved to a fighter's early career. After a failed tenure with the UFC, Mirko Krokop was enjoying a mini-renaissance with the Japanese promotion Ryzen, winning 10 of his last 11 fights with all of his victories coming by stoppage. When Bellator announced a working agreement with Ryzen, Krokop was immediately linked with a move to the promotion, and a main event bout against fellow veteran Roy Nelson was penciled for Bellator 216. The fight was a rematch from their first bout at UFC 137, where Nelson defeated Krokop by second round stoppage, leading Krokop to briefly announce his retirement, with Nelson openly expressing his belief he'd be facing an enhanced opponent this time around. No, he, he definitely has. Do I mean, if he, he definitely has doctors that uh, that make him better and stronger, faster. Um, I mean, I, th I think even he got he left the UFC because of that, because he had doctors that were uh, making him better and stronger. The majority of the fight was spent in the clinch, with Krokop landing the more meaningful strikes, and even showing flashes of his old self with a trademark high kick in the second round. 
Nelson finally got the takedown he long sought with a minute remaining in the bout, but his Croatian opponent was able to hold on for one of the most vindicating wins of his career. Mirko Krokop picks up the unanimous decision win. Now one and one with Roy Nelson who can't believe the outcome. Krokop expressed interest in returning to Bellator in the future. But any hopes of a sophomore outing were ended when he suffered a stroke days after the Nelson fight. Krokop retired shortly after, having amassed a 38-11 record and cementing his place as one of the sport's all-time greats. Bellator was intended to give Josh Koscik a much-needed career turnaround. At the height of his career, Koscik was regarded as one of the best welterweights in the world, claiming wins over Matt Hughes and Rumble Johnson, and even challenging GSP for the welterweight title. But his abrasive personality and tendency to fight dirty made him one of the sport's biggest villains. By 2015, however, Koscik was riding a five-fight losing streak with four coming within the distance. But it didn't stop Bellator giving the veteran another shot when he was released from his UFC contract that March. Koscheck was immediately linked to a match with UFC rival Paul Daly, the man whom Koscheck claimed his most controversial win over back in 2010. But after being forced out of the match due to an injury, the Ultimate Fighter alum was booked against 12-7 Maurizio Alonso at Bellator 172. Koscheck had been criticized in his later career for abandoning his wrestling game and appeared to do so again in an entirely stand-up bout, a decision that came back to haunt him late in the first round. Koscheck immediately protested the decision, claiming the fight-changing strike had inadvertently caught him in his left eye. An ironic result given Koscheck's history with eye pokes. Oh, I hate these gloves. The sixth straight loss was too much for Koscheck, who formally announced his retirement 14 months later. Kevin Holland is often criticized for his poor grappling abilities, but not if you were watching Bellator back in uh, 2018. Holland had been a fixture of the regional scene over the past three years, competing for the King of the Cage and LFA, including a win over UFC welterweight Jeff Neal. This led him to a one-fight deal with Bellator, where Holland took on 6-2 Tegan Dooley on the prelims of Bellator 195. Dooley, known for his strong wrestling, wasted little time getting the fight to his domain, but a sloppy takedown attempt in the first round was all Holland needed to claim the upset victory. Looking to lock it in right here, right now. It is all over! Kevin Holland! The fight marked the eighth first round finish and went a long way to answering the critics who'd written him off as a knockout artist. Dooley, meanwhile, would never win another fight before transitioning to bare knuckle boxing. Holland's win led him to be signed for Dana White's Contender Series, infamously being denied a contract after White accused him of talking too much during his fights. Holland would eventually enter the promotion as a short notice replacement, and in 2020, he embarked on a run of form that saw him claim five wins in a calendar year, becoming only the second man in company history to achieve such an honor. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Bellator 48 saw two forgotten alums square off as Kimbo killer Seth Petrozelli claimed a first round stoppage over Rico Rodriguez. Derek Lewis's early career included a decision loss to Tony Johnson at Bellator 46. Conor McGregor claimed a split decision win over Mark Goddard at Bellator 187. The result, however, is still disputed to this day. Wow, Conor McGregor trying to go at the referee. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the Bellator so you never miss a video. See what we did there? <laughs>